Today is August 10th, 2019. It is 12.10 p.m. This is Luciana Spraker representing the City of Savannah's Municipal Archives. I'm interviewing Miss Georgia Wright Benton for the City of Savannah's Frogtown Yamacraw West Broad Street History Roundup Day Project. We are conducting this interview at the Georgia State Railroad Museum. Today we will be discussing the history of the West Broad Street area and the surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Benton. You're welcome. Okay, let's have a start by um, telling us your full name. My full name is Georgia Edna Wright Benton. Okay, and what neighborhood are you going to talk about today? My life expands across all three neighborhoods you are talking about today. Okay. Yamacraw, Frogtown, and Currytown. Currytown. Um, when were you born? I was born August the 28th, 1949. Okay. And where were you born? I was born in Charity Hospital, but at the time my parents lived in Currytown on Rapport Street. R-A-P-P-O-R-T, which is a street behind Law Road Cemetery. And what were your parents' names? George Wright and Rosalie Wright. What did your dad do for a living? My dad was a laborer. He did a um, he worked for a car dealership, dealing with tire repairs and all that. And my mother was a laundress. She was a, what you call a silk and wool presser. Okay. Um, where did you grow up during your childhood? Yamacraw, Currytown. Okay. Um, so, when you were in Yamacraw, do you remember what your uh, your unit number was? I lived at three different locations in Yamacraw. I lived at 814, 411, and 761. Okay. Do you um, remember what years you were in Yamacraw? Um, I was in my first memory of life, really, is Yamacraw at eight fourteen as a child. And when we were, when I was about four years old, we moved to four eleven. Then I moved, we moved out of four eleven. Then I moved to Currytown. That had been Currytown like in 1959. And then I came back in Yamacraw like about 1963. And that's when I moved to 761. Okay. Now when I lived in Currytown, I was living at 613 West Park Avenue. Do you um, do you know know why your family was moving around so much? Yeah, we was poor. Mm -hmm. my, you gotta realize I am um, my mother. Uh, I'm a, a child of a single parent mother, mm -hmm. and when I was living in Currytown, I was living with my grandmother, which was my paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, you gotta realize. We were financially poor, but rich with love. Being, I am what you call a change of life baby. All my brothers and sisters were grown. All right? When, when I lived at 814, 814, it was a big house. We all were together. My sister and her family lived there, my brother and his family lived there, my mom and I and, and my father and I lived there. Well, my brother moved to like in the eight mm, they had to be in like eight forty something. Yeah. They had to be in like eight forty something. And then my mother and I and my father went to four eleven. And my sister and her family moved to 526. Now, I still was a child because I attended kindergarten up there, what we call the center, which is really a replica of the Hermitage 
the old Hermes Plantation house. Mm -hmm. Okay, I tend to send her up there. I didn't have a babysitter. When you say a village raised a child, the village raised the children while the parents work. Everyone will look out for a child. Oh, that's Rosalie child. It ain't, it's not five o'clock yet. She's not all from work. I had um, Miss Taylor who worked at the center, which is Paul Taylor's mother, who was the first, as you know, the black, first black fire chief. Mm -hmm. All right, in Savannah. Well, she would put me across Farm Street. Then Miss Frazier, who was living at, Miss Frazier had to been living in the 230 block, so like 233. She would watch me go, they wouldn't let me cross the street now, all right? And then as I got up to the church, First Bryant, I'm still on Bryant Street now. Uh -huh. Then Mrs. Sams, who lived like about the two, she was like about 217 or 215, uh, somewhere there, uh, uh, right there. Then she would watch me turn the corner right there by the church. Mm -hmm. See, I was in the 200 block, of, but I was on the 300 row. Kind of leapfrogging all the moms. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. And then Miss Leela Jones, who lived at 417, will peep out that her back door because they knew what time I was supposed to be coming up. And she would, and she would tell Miss Sands, which she could see, I got her. Mm -hmm. I beat her turn on up. And I'll be in my in my row, mm -hmm. and I couldn't leave out the row. All right, unless I went down to the five hundred block, like the five twenty six, where my sister lived, and then right if my sister wasn't home at five twenty five, old lady Miss Rosa Brown, she was like, um, "Your sister not home, gal? Come on, sit on this porch." That's how it was. So you mentioned the center and that it had a kindergarten. What mm -hmm. other activities went on at the center? Uh, that was it. Unless you went to the playground, right, which was behind the center. Mm -hmm. And they had a sprinkling system mm -hmm. um, for during the summer months. Mm -hmm. But that was it. There was no, you know, had no after school activity and all that kind of stuff as the kids have now. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff exists. Mm -hmm. So the kids had to make their own fun. Oh, you made your own fun. You took a bottle and some grass and you made your doll, you know, oh, and the boys would take some Union Number no. 5 skates and make a school out of it with boards and we'll get them a couple find a piece of board or the boys would take somebody mark off, mark off the line and play what we call half rubber. Mm -hmm. You want to describe what half rubber is first? Okay, okay, half rubber is they would take a rubber ball, cut the ball in half, and hit it with the stick. So, you know, I, I've heard of the half rubber. Why, do, why would kids think it's more fun to pay, play with half a ball than a whole ball. Because it was harder to hit. Yeah, harder to hit. Okay. And, and go in different places. Yes. Yeah. See? It was spiral in a different manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think somebody said something about who's inventing something. Like, uh -uh. You got to come down to Yammer Crawl to find half rubber. Do people still play half rubber today? The older generation do. I think the younger generation call it stick ball. But that's with a round ball, isn't it? Yeah, but they call it stick ball. Mm -hmm. But um, back in the day, it was really half of a rubber ball. Mm -hmm. And see, what 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 would happen is, to also too, it was economically sound and economically feasible because half of the ball. By the time you keep hitting it, you keep hitting it. One half tear up, fine. We got another half to play with. <laughs> right. So you mentioned some of the mothers in the neighborhood. Who were some of the male, um, you know, leaders or people you looked at? Okay, to? your male leaders were mainly your ministers. 
Now, I was raised up in First Bright Baptist Church. So during that time, I was under the, our church was under the fellowship or the administration of Richard M. Williams. Okay, okay, Richard Williams. And he had a tendency of always, at a certain time, that he would walk through the project. And held the residents. Many of the residents were part of his of the church. Some were not. But he had a way of walking through the project, hailing the resident. He would go from one end of Yamacro, walk down all the way to um, um, Zubla Street, make his turn, come back up towards, you know, go down towards Farm Street, come back up towards the church. But he will hail the resident as he went. So this is kind of getting... And, and then, too, you had a lot of um, the deacons of the church. Many of them, some of them owned businesses down there. Some didn't. You know, like you had Haywood Market. Um, like I said, you know, some didn't. But there were a lot of positive male leaders for those who didn't have one at home because the churches provided it. And you had many churches in Yamaha. All right? For example, you had First Bank, you had um, Mount Bethel, you had, oh, we call it Old St. Philip, St. Philip Monumental, you had Garvin Temple, you had Metropolitan, you had Central, and you have several holiness churches down there in Yamaha. Mm -hmm. Oh, and these churches was full were residents from Yamaha. Mm -hmm. And what do you have today? You still have First Bryan. That's, That's it. Have the other congregations just moved, relocated? They had to. Urban Renewal forced them to move. Mm -hmm. But Urban Renewal could not take the property of Yamaha, of uh, First Bryant. And the reason they couldn't take the property is because the way the deeds of First Bryant read. See? Mm -hmm. Urban, the, the deed of our church is we are under a trusteeship. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that go on that parcel of land is a colored church of a Baptist persuasion. Mm -hmm. Anything else the land will have to go back to heirs of the original trustees. Now they made it, they tried, but they had to give that land back to the church. They had to redeed it back to the church. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Um, with the with when you were growing up. I'm sure there were people in Yamakaw Village who were there in Old Yamakaw before the urban renewal. It was still, the village is part of the first part of the, of the, of the urban renewal. Mm -hmm. Around you was still old wooden houses and everything. The section where the what we call the U.S. Post Office is. Mm -hmm. All those wooden houses were still there. So that where the bus, was... where the bus station is. Yeah. Presently is. Right. All those old houses, Union, where the Union Mission. All those were old houses where scatters. All of those West Boundary Street. All those were old wooden houses. When did you, when did they start? going away then the what was a, around Yamaha Village okay. public um concept. let's say sixties. Right. Round in the sixties. Round in the sixties they started going around the other part because the wooden part with the where the post office is now, we used to call that the north end. The north end of Yamaha. See, see, a lot of people get confused and think that when you say Yamacro, you're talking just about the project. No, we're talking about the neighborhood. Okay, the Yamacro neighborhood. The Yamacro neighborhood extends really from Indian Street to 
I would say the north side of Louisville Road, because if you can't cross Louisville Road, you're in Frogtown area. Okay. So really the train trussle, the Central Georgia Railroad train trussle, really was your southern boundary, and your western boundary was the Ogeechee Canal, okay. and your eastern boundary was the old West Road Street, okay. which y'all call now MLK. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are talking about the west side of MLK, of uh, uh, West Front Street, okay. not the east side of West Front Street. Okay, so let me ask you, um, for, for people, either whether they're living in Yamacraw Village Project or in old Yamacraw that was still there, how did they feel about the urban renewal clearing out part of old Yamacraw and coming in. How'd they feel about but that? But you got to realize, they couldn't have been happy, especially when you're going to take my church. Mm -hmm. For example, St. Foe, the first AME church in the state of Georgia, moved. They couldn't feel happy about that, mm -hmm. but you were forced to do so. And then you were given little or nothing for what you had. You weren't given equal money. People had to sell dinners, do all, all sorts of projects to raise money to help pay for a new location, find a new location. And most of the new locations were white churches that moved out into more south. that they move into. So that you're talking about churches, what about the residents? Were the they, residents, that most of the residents had to go east. East. Or it goes, to, because urban renewal, when urban renewal came through again, they took, they went, they went, you gotta realize, urban renewal went all the way, I'm gonna give it to almost, um, to the Collin Brownville area. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see, because when I moved back in Yamacraw, like about 63, 62 or 63, I had to move out because my grandmother lived in at 613 West Park Avenue, which was current, uh, was which in the Calaverville um, area, or it's really half current town, half Calaverville area. Well, because Urban Renewal was coming through. So she had to move out of where she was. Now, for many, the older generation, being able to move from that area, the Curry Town area, where they were tearing down houses and everything, because I, my cousin and I would go to the, uh, up there on Maple Street, Maple Lane area, and, we were hard wood for the winter months for my grandmother, for her to use in her fireplace or use in her old stove. coal stove. All right. Now, when they came through and she was forced to move, you must realize for her, moving into Yamacraw village, moving to the village, the project, was one of the best things. Why? Because when she used to live at 1612 Ogeechee Road, that's what I said, I didn't do, I didn't do color down real curry town because I know about it. Uh, there was no indoor facilities, no running water, the water, the faucet was outside, okay? Mm -hmm. When she moved on Park Avenue, okay, Still no indoor facilities. I mean, hey, if it wasn't for the moons and the stars at night, you had a problem, <laughs> you know? But they did put a sink inside for her to make use of, mm -hmm. all right? And she was able to, then the adventure came with the gas line. Then she was able to use a gas stove to cook with but she still had the heat with her fireplace. 
And okay. she still had outdoor bathroom facilities. Right. But see, when she moved into Yamaha, there were all the facilities were inside. What was your grandmother's name? My grandmother's name was Mamie Wright. W-R-I-G-H-T. That's my paternal grandmother. And you got to also understand um, there was no hot water unless you, before then, unless you heat it on the stove, put it in the number 10 tub to take the bath. Okay? All right? And if you got more than one taking a bath, well, guess what? If you're the oldest one, you're the last one to take the bath. You got it? And, and the tub will be in front of the fireplace and all of that. Or you had a wash basin to fresh yourself up during the day or during the week till it was time to make that bath water again. Now, but in Yamakro, you had a bathroom, bathtub, all the facilities. But hot water did not come in the beginning in Yamakro. We had a solar heating system. See, solar power, Yamakro Village really was probably, I, I'm assuming, one of the earlier use of solar heat. And during the and that's where the water pipes ran through. So during the summer months, that's when you had your hot water, real, real hot water. But in the winter months, the solar panels weren't working. Not as well as the summer <laughs> when you really wanted warm water. <laughs> right. But then, but then they eventually placed in gas heaters. Interesting. Very interesting. So. So in some ways, it, that was the best thing that could happen for her. For her, for her age. And you got to realize, when I started living with her, she was 75, I was 10. So you got to think about the gap, okay. the period gap. But but for those that live, that may be living around in the other areas of Yamakura, where urban renewal came through, they most of those people move on the east side. Okay, and they move east between a lot of them um, moved in the area um, on outside, on this side of B Road. Okay. On this side of B Road, they became many of them became homeowners, but a lot of them moved, and if they were homeowners, they were rentals because there was no other place to go. But East, because if you went further into your college, a Cali Brownville area, like on the other side of you, when you got into your 36th, 35th, 36th area up in there, um, a lot of those people were homeowners, though a historic black homeowners. Mm -hmm. So there and with with the I call it the white ecstasy of moving to the south side, they made those homes on B Road and all that other stuff more available mm -hmm. for rentals and to be purchased. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so, okay, so Yamacra, we sort of defined the boundaries of Yamacra. Surrounding Yamacra, then, we've got Frogtown to the uh, south. Yes. Um, what would be, and then you're going to have the, the downtown to the east. What would be, have been the neighboring uh, na uh, community to the west of Yamacra? We used to call that Springfield Terrace. Okay. And so, of course, you got to, well, it depends. If you're going straight down Bay Street, yeah, okay, you had your um, West Savannah area, Fairwood Home area up in there, you know, mm -hmm. okay, you had that area, mm -hmm. and then Further. if you're going towards the Granite Street side on on this side, I, I say on this side, Louisville Road, the Train Trussell, you know, you had your Springfield Terrace area. Gotcha. Okay. okay, and then of course you had your Carver Village, and there's a 
And the back part of Carver Village was called Flatland Village. Do you know, I've heard that. Do you know why it's called Flatland Village? Is it just flat? Is it actually because it's flat? <laughs> okay, the reason they call it Flatland Village, if you, back in the day, it used to flood. Low land. Low land. It was low land. Um, let me ask you, we've talked about a lot of different yeah. areas. So I'm and of course that was for Cloverdale King. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's Cloverdale's 1960. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a lot of different neighborhoods. So I'm going to ask you uh, this question and you can talk about whether it's Currytown or Yamacra or just West Broad mm -hmm. Street. But like, what are your favorite memories of these places? My favorite memory of each one of these places is the neighborhood. And why I say the neighborhood? The people in the neighborhood. When I talk about Yamacraw, my most fond memory, and still is, because I'm a member of it, is First Bright Baptist Church. And the people in the church. Because a lot of them were of the community. And they looked out for me. And as I go walk down West Forest Street into Curry Town, Park Avenue, again, it's the people. And the church. You got Bethlehem right there on the corner of Kyla and um, Park Avenue. At that time, it was Kyla Street mm -hmm. and Park Avenue. During that time, Park Avenue was dirt. There was no sidewalk. The only sidewalk you had on Park Avenue in the 600 block, that had to be, I live at 613, 14. That had to have been like about 16 or something like that. Just before you got to College Street was the Browns family. Rosa Brown, Sarah, Miss um, White, her brother, sister, they live in their family home. And you had to walk up the steps to walk on the sidewalk from the dirt. And then after you pass their property line, you walk down. And they were related to the Derricks, Mrs. Derrick which owned Derrick's Inn. They're part of that family. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, but, um, it's the neighborhood. It's the joy of living there, people looking out for each other, the joy of friendship. You're walking back to school, folk to school, see, you got, must understand, the fellowship you develop when you had to walk from Yamagra Village to Kyla Street School. And then when you got to high school, we went to Beach. We walked from Yamagra Village to Beach High. Had to be there by 8 o'clock in the morning. Nobody gave us a bus. We didn't have a bus. Yes, we were picked at as we walked down West Forest Street because we were riding the bus by those who were on the bus. But can you imagine? There was a group of us, it was like a band, like about 10 or 15 of us. We would walk out of Yamacro. Then we'd get down to the Frontine area. You pick up another about four or five of us. We all going to the same school in the same class. You know, same grade. Then we get into Curry Town, pick up another group. You walk all the way up till you get to the game park area. You get quite a game by the time you get to school. <laughs> right, and then guess what happens? All right, you you're on the way back, you're walking. Bye. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? You, but Yamagro and, and the North End was the last of the Mohegans <laughs> going. Bye! <laughs> okay. 
Um, how has Gamer Call Village changed since you were there? The unity. Yamaha Crawl in the, in the back in the day was really a community. It had its own little world. But it did not the Yama Crawl today does not have the unity and the fellowship. That's something our church working real hard at now. Develop more of a community relationship. This year I had Kid Cafe. I worked with Kid Cafe. And I served over 1,700 meals. Wow. Now that's Ernest Green right there. I, you, I know you heard many talks about Ernest Green. I heard you. I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was telling the first born in Yamaha Village. Yeah, that, that that's the guy you heard, you heard so many talked about. Okay, well, over there. Okay, we'll oh, have to get with you. Oh, in the other room. Okay. Okay, but that's Ernest Green. That's the Ernest Green they are they were speaking of. Okay, good. That's the gentleman right there. Did you bring my picture and my stuff with you? I ain't gonna lie, it's at the church. Yeah, I got my birth certificate. Yeah. So somebody in doubt. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. You have tomorrow, you have tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, but that's the Ernest Green that they were speaking of. Okay, I wasn't in the room, so I didn't hear the yeah. stories, but I'll talk but, to you. But if anybody ever talk, you heard them talk about Ernest. In fact, Ernest, <clears throat> they were looking at the 1940 census for Yamacro, and they picked up the Robert and them. Mm -hmm. They picked up the various people that were living there. Go look at that 1940 census. Yeah. I'm just kidding. We had breakfast, see? I'm just leaving the breakfast. Okay. And we have language. Oh, yeah. I was telling him, he's at first, Brian, also. Yes. Yeah, down at church. Yeah, we have a deacon. We just can a deacon meeting. Okay, then. All right. Um, what about Frogtown and Currytown? Do you consider Frogtown and Currytown, do you consider those to be lost communities, lost, or do they still exist in some form? Frogtown. Frog Town is lost, Curry Town is lost, but the memory is not lost. And I think that's part of why we're here. Today. Right, the memory is not gone. The memory isn't gone. Okay? Development and really and truly urban renewal destroyed Yamacro except for the church. It was not for the church. Yamacro for First Bright Baptist Church. Yamacro really would not be in existence. But it's the memory. Right, because Yamacro Village is different than Yamacro. Yeah, Yamacro. Yes. See, and within our church, we have people that used to live on Hull Street. That's still Yamacro. Indian Street, Middle Street, all those streets. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that I have not asked you that you want to share? My thing is, <clears throat> if we're going to deal with the history of any of these areas, all timelines have a beginning. Let's deal with the beginning. Okay. If you're going to talk about Yamaha, okay? And then also, although the timeline to me with the memory is is a huge African heritage to me that was demolished and that memory need to continue to exist if, if you do anything that said to Yamacro. Because you've already demolished Frogtown. Frogtown is gone. Mm -hmm. When 
it was loud for that apartment to overshadow Union Baptist Church. To me, that was the most cruel thing you could have done to Frogtown. Overshadow. Because when you overshadow Union Baptist Church, you overshadow the old Jewish cemetery. See? You allow modernization to overshadow the history. I happened to take a train ride, which happened to D.C. this summer. And when I came out of Union Station, I looked back. And my memory went immediately back to the old beautiful Union Station and the marble floors we once had here that was destroyed. Stop destroying history. That is a problem we have. And we have a problem. I'm not trying to be ethnical, but we have no problem destroying black history for modernization. Okay? For example, how many of you know where the first black cemetery in Savannah, in the state of Georgia, was? If I tell you, Rosa Sharon sitting on top of you, you think I'm lying. Yeah. Well, and it's easy. It has been easy for people to displace African Americans. Right, because they do not have the power. They do not have the force that they need to protect it. Okay? As a historian of our church, I sent a letter to the state of Georgia, the housing authority, the city of Savannah, everything, requesting if you do anything with Yamacrawville, we want. First Bryant won't first option to the land that's between Farm and Ann, Zubla and Bryant. I wrote that letter almost five, I know more than five years ago. They can't say they don't have it. It exists. Why? I don't want the heritage destroyed. You're talking about falling changing Bay Street, putting back lanes on Bay Street, but you're not looking at the fatality rate. Okay? When you come down into Yamako with your modern cafe, what you gonna put there to acknowledge what was once there? We cannot look, when we look at projects, we look like all oh, these poor economic kids. But brilliant minds came out of all of these places, out of Yamacraw, Frogtown, Currytown, that you do. Brilliant minds came out of there. Okay? Judge Morris, out of Yamacraw. Paul Taylor, out of Yamacraw. I'm an entrepreneur, a school teacher, out of Yamacraw. I have doctors, lawyers, out of Yamacraw, Frogtown, Currytown. All over the United States. We made positive contributions. So you can't look at a child at the project and say, oh, he's nothing. Because you don't know the mindset. You don't know what they were taught. Am I making some sense? Absolutely, yes. You know, so when you come with these vivid plans, these beautiful plans to take over the black ethnic areas, and destroy all their history. You ain't acknowledging nothing about it. I attended a meeting right there over there at the Coastal Georgia Center. I'm looking at this beautiful plan for the extended downtown area. But yet you want to put a building High enough to close off that you can't see First Bryant Baptist Church sitting on the oldest piece of black owned land in America away? That's tourist attraction. But you don't care to bring your trolleys by there. You don't care to stop your trolleys in there. Look at the architect. You're talking about Jay Williams. William J. Architect, who you think designed Fresh Bryant? 
Um, hog. Yeah! Okay! Mm -hmm. Look at it! It has a historic value and a historic meaning that no other church in the state of Georgia, the United States, got. Yeah. Inside of it, you have the largest north organ, pipe organ. We are catching the devil trying to raise the money to restore it. The only one left in the United States like it. Wow. Built in 1856. Obtained from Independent Presbyterian Church. I'd love to um, share what I know about the architect with you. Yeah. Because he was a city surveyor. Okay. Yeah. But, but no, I... I, I See, well, we're, we're making all these new yeah. things. Well, part of what we're doing today, you know, at the, the archives is we want to make sure we're documenting history. I, I can't I can't necessarily solve yeah, the problems. But but, but yeah, yeah. But, but you, you got to know about him. Yeah. You got to know about about the first the, the, the first governor used to live in Yamaha. Yeah. In that area. First governor for the state of Georgia. That's just how important Yamaha is. Well, even where the name Yamaha comes from. Yeah, but that, but still, that's just how important it is. Not only to the history of Savannah, the state of Georgia, but the United States. Right. 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 Yamacraw is vital to the history. We can't destroy it. We have we may enhance it, but we cannot destroy it. We can't take away. Now when I spoke to you, you all those churches I told you about, you need to get in touch with them. Because they were in Yamacraw. I I will follow up. I don't it, think I, we've I, had that conversation. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't name the churches. I think I named. I I've got a lit. I've talked. Um, asked the question about churches to everyone I've talked to, but I haven't. I've never okay. talked to anybody before today. All right, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Get in touch with them. I will to get their history. Get know. their history. Because they are the Yamacraw. Yeah. No. Frogtown. Union Baptist Church yeah. about was the oldest one down there, but it's not the only one that was down there. Mm -hmm. Get their history. Yeah. No, so we're um with the archives, today is our first day in starting this process. Well baby you got a long ways to go. I know. And, and we're doing this with a couple different neighborhoods, so so But this is I this is um Yamacrow is your Oldest. I want to <coughs> say, and I stand on it. Really, Yama Crawl is your oldest black community in Georgia. Okay. You know, when the slaves came in, I don't care where you say, but you say they came in the Yama Crawl. What? And when they settled, when they were able to, after freedom, you got to understand, even before then, because our first church was down on Mill Street, okay, in the 1780s, it was on Mill Street. That's in Yamaha. Mm -hmm. All right? Your, your oldest Gullah Geechee area in Georgia. Is in Yamacro. Yamacro has a, a well-rounded history. The Irish came in. Where did it go? Yamacro before they went to the fort. The Jewish community. Yes, that's why. Where the Jewish cemetery at? First Jewish cemetery in the state of Georgia. See, you know, I mean, we know where the first, almost everything in the state of Georgia, cemeteries, is that black? The African American. That was destroyed. See? So let's stop destroying history. Let's enhance it. All right? If you're going to do young girl, come from Royalville Plantation. Work your way up. 
talk about Thomas Gibson. You know, I know why I know about Thomas Gibson because he provided land for our church to be built on. So our our job is to document and preserve what we've already lost mm -hmm. and to capture what's going on now as well. So that that's our job, and we'll do our very best to, to work on it. <laughs> so. And it's not going to be something that's going to be done overnight. No. Because we cannot forget, like for that here, I'm call. He had a store right there on Bryant and, what's that? Ann? Yeah. On Ann and Bryant. It's an ongoing project. Right. It used to go Yanks. Mm, yeah. Had a, had a, had a sister named Molly, you, you know what I'm saying? And Hernstein, which is where the housing authority now has a building, have their offices. That used to be Hernstein Market. Okay? And when you want to, if you got a real large family, you go over there to Alexander and buy your book items. You know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, you may come out with a hundred pound bag of rice. <laughs> Those are the things. Oh, you had Baker's Drug Store right there. On Bryant. That had been on Bryant and West Broad, right there where the um, hotel is. That was Baker's Drug Store. But you can't forget about West Broad Street School. Mm -hmm. Did you attend that as yes, well? Yes, I did. I went from West Broad Street School, I went from the first to the fourth grade. And in the basement was the cafeteria. And boy, those cinnamon rolls. No one made cinnamon rolls. was awesome. But they made it three story. It was three storage then. Mm -hmm. And in the yard, closer to the project area, to the back wall, was what, uh, what we call the annex building. Okay. You had four classrooms in there, two down and two up mm -hmm. over there. And then over in the main building, of course, there were three levels to it. That's the building, that's the building I know about. Okay. Yeah. The modern building, when I go into it, I carry, when I carry youth into the building, I tour it as the old Westboro Street School for them. Mm -hmm. Because what they call the old dining area, the, the ballroom area, mm -hmm. is still where uh, the old wooden stove, you can still see the spot of where we used to have the old wooden stove, we used to have a grate around it. And if we came to school and it was raining, we were allowed to throw our socks across the grate to dry, mm -hmm. to dry our feet. And w who is the teacher or principal that you remember the most from West Broad Street School? Mr. Dixon mm -hmm. and Mary's, okay, Mrs. Clark, who just passed about two years ago, Gen Genevieve Clark. Um, uh, right now, I can't think of her son name, Foster. I think Foster, he used to be over the um, welfare department. Mm -hmm. He may have some pictures that can kill you a little further back. Okay, okay. I'm just giving you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Foster. Well, Genevieve Clark was my first grade teacher. Okay, Mary Second was my second grade teacher. Then I had to go. Um, then. Um, and okay, full grade teacher was Mrs. Polder. And then Sadie Stringer was my third grade teacher. Then I moved out of Yamacro and went over to um, your Curry Town area. Well, more of your Kyle of area because I went to Kyle Street School. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't realize Kyle Street School was not only a junior high school, but also was an elementary school. Mm -hmm. So I went to Kyle Street School in fifth grade. And, um, Mrs. Johnson and Farrah Johnson was my fifth grade teacher. Connie's Full Marcus was my sixth grade teacher. Seven and eighth grade, that's when you had home teachers then, was um, Betty Douse. Was my seventh and eighth grade. Then I went to Beach High. You graduated from Beach. I'm back to uh, the class of 67 okay. from Beach High. Okay. Um. I think you've covered all the questions I had for you. Sorry, I hate to barge in. I work at the newspaper covering this day. Would it be okay if I took a picture of you guys interviewing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, no. we are just finishing up, awesome. so go ahead. You know what, yeah. um, so, um, so <laughs> that, oh, I hope I was. Uh, did you learn anything? Yes, ma'am. I learned plenty. 
So, so that, that actually was, was the end of my question. So I'll just give you an opportunity. Is there anything closing you wanted to say? History is valuable. Mm -hmm. Everyone in history is not the same. But we must, the city must do everything they can to preserve various community history. Because if we destroy, we have to teach our kids what the old folks used to say. You don't know where you're going until you know where you come from. That's a true statement. If we destroy everything, we have nothing to be able to show our kids, oh, this is where I went to school. Or this is the neighborhood where I used to live. Or this was placed by such and such a person. We have, if we get rid of history, we will not have no visual learning tools. What are we going to have left? You know, we got to be visual. And what, what more play, beautiful place to have such things as that is in Savannah? As old as Savannah is. Why can't we preserve these historic things? You spend a lot of time on modern. Why can't we just convert some of the stuff we have for modern usage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you also talked about the different histories. Too. Yes. I think that's important. Yeah. And, and incorporate the dis different histories. You cannot talk about Yavon Crow unless you talk about Royalville. Because that's Yamacraw's Royal Deal Plantation. Or that Yamacraw's history is is certainly not the same as the history on the other side of town. No, Yamacraw's history is not the same as the fort. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. You know? Uh, um, the Thomas the Thomas um, Square. Square area mm -hmm. is not the same. Yeah. It's a, it's a different history. But it's a blended history. Certainly. It's a beautiful blend. Beautiful blend. I like it's that. It's a beautiful <laughs> blend. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, Miss Benson, I want to thank you for taking your time today with me. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. All right. All right. And